we need to do the posterior palatal seal. And the posterior palatal seal, if you remember, is that part of the peripheral seal of the denture that connects the peripheral roll that we have of the maxillary all the way around. It connects it across the palate where we don't have a seal other than by displacing some tissue. So we're going to establish the length of the maxillary denture and we're going to carve into this cast a posterior palatal seal. There are two phases to establishing the posterior palatal seal. Number one is you need to establish how long you want the maxillary denture to be, how far back onto the palate it should go. And the object is to try to get that seal or the length of the maxillary denture to occur at the junction of movable and immovable tissues. That's generally going to occur in the area of the fovea palatini and on the base plate I can read the fovea palatini here. And this base plate's about three millimeters longer than the fovea palatini. Now what I want to do is I want to test by transferring from this base plate to the mouth a mark to show us exactly where this length that we have at this point, where that is in the mouth. It should be, if I've done things the way I like them to be, it should be too long at this point. It should be back onto the movable tissue too far, and the object is, is to try to find out how much of this I would have to cut, cut off to have the posterior end of this base plate to exactly coincide with the junction of movable and immovable tissues. take an indelible ink marker and what we use here at the University of Louisville is a little stick with indelible ink on the end of it that's called a Thompson, Thompson sanitary marker. All that is is indelible ink on the end of a stick and we use that and what we're going to do is rub some of that ink right onto the cut edge of the base plate on the posterior cut edge of the base plate like so. Now I'm going to ask you to, move, to open your mouth and not close it for any reason until I tell you, okay? This can be tricky. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to insert this into the patient's mouth and seat it very, very firmly. If you have doubts about whether or not the soft palate will come down and touch that, a good way of doing that is to grasp the nose. Now blow hard through your nose one time. That's it, now just relax. Just relax, okay? Now, that will force the soft palate down into the posterior edge of that rim. And now the object is going to be is to look in the mouth and see where that is. Now say, ah, ah. and you can see that mark moving up and down. Now, if you steady a mirror over it, say, ah, ah, and you'll see the mark is moving up and down, then move the mirror forward. Say, ah, 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 ah. Right there, about three millimeters in the midline is the point that you can find that is the junction between the movable and immovable tissue. You need to evaluate the position of that line. And what we're going to do is to look at the line back there and have the patient say, ah, 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 short hacky, ah, ah. Uh-huh, short, hacky, ah. Uh. Now we want to check for the hamular notches. The easy way to do that is take the head of the mirror and feel of the tuberosity and push it back feeling for the notch as you go back and you will feel it fall into that cleft between the pterygoid hamulus and the end of the alveolar ridge. That's the hamular notch and where that would be the end of the denture and in this case that line is slightly posterior to it so we're maybe two millimeters too long in the right hamular notch area. Now let's go to the other side and see what we find there and it's slightly longer on the other side, it's maybe three millimeters on the other side. Look at the position of that line in relation to the hamular notch. 
when you evaluate the hamular notch, you will feel no bony bone underneath it, just a cleft in the bone. And that line seems to be slightly posterior to that cleft in the bone. We have the same situation on the other side. We know that on our cast, that on the base plate, that on the patient's right, it's about two millimeters too long in the hamular notch area. It's a little longer than that on the left hamular notch, which is about that area. In the midline, it's about that much too long, so I'm just going to mark that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take a burr and the handpiece and I'm going to cut that off exactly to that line and then we're going to repeat that procedure once again to see if we can get the posterior limit of this base plate to exactly match the hamular notches on the right and the left and also to match the junction of the movable and immovable tissues as we find them in the mouth. So we're cutting it now to the length that we anticipated when we judge this in the mouth. And once you have that cut, we can rinse the chips off of it, dry it so we don't get a smear with the indelible ink, take a, one of Dr. Thompson's sanitary markers, put the ink back onto the edge of it just like we did the first time. This is at the corrected length. Back in the mouth. Blow your nose real hard, relax. Now just relax right there. Turn your head over this way that we can see. We should see another mark now, anterior to the mark we had before. And if we place this on the new mark, now say ah, uh -huh. and we see the palate, does the soft palate does not move away from it now. Let's see if we come to the hamular notch. That mark should go right through the mirror head, and it does. On the other side, that mark should go right through the mirror head, and it does. Now say, ah, uh, uh. and you can see the back mark is moving. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh. the front mark is not moving. That front mark is, the, say, ah, uh, ah, uh. and the front mark does not move. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh. that front mark is at the junction of the movable and immovable tissue. Open now, don't allow the tongue to come up and hit it. And we will look again at that line and say, ah, 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 real short hacky, ah, ah. Okay, very good, short hacky, ah, ah. Breathe through your nose. There we go. Now, and we palpate for the hamular notches on either side, and we see that those go right through the hamular notch. The next thing we want to do is to take a rounded end instrument and what we're feeling for is to see how much displaceable tissue we have in that bed of glandular tissue just anterior to the line that we anticipate is going to be the posterior limit of the denture. And we can do that by palpating. And we can palpate that and make a judgment as to what the width and the depth of that layer of palpable tissue is. Now the object is to take a rounded end instrument, and I like to use the end of one of the instruments that has a rounded end on it, and palpate just anterior to the line that's there and see how much tissue we have to work with in which to place our posterior palatal seal. And by evaluating that, I can know the size and shape of the posterior palatal seal. Now we're going to transfer the information that we've gathered now to the master cast. We do that by seating 
the base plate back onto the master cast and take your buffalo knife, the wooden handled buffalo knife, and just score the cast exactly at the end of where we cut the base plate. And we can see that this line now represents our posterior limit of where we want the denture to go, and that's at the junction of the movable and immovable tissues. Now, in addition to that, we have palpated in the patient's mouth for a layer of glandular tissue that is displaceable. That's the area that we're going to be able to displace with the denture in order to create a seal or the posterior palatal seal. And we found that that area was quite narrow through the hamular notch. It's maybe two millimeters wide on both sides. It's quite narrow through the notch area. You always want to carry your seal, by the way, as you're scraping it lateral from the notches down two to three millimeters lateral to the notches. We found that the layer of tissue display that was displaceable was quite, quite, quite wide in the lateral palatin regions like this. It narrowed down somewhat in the midline, like so. So it was very narrow through the notch. It came out to a very wide area in the lateral portions of the palate, narrowed down towards the center of the palate. Back to the other side, it was wide again, and narrowed down towards the hamular notch once again. Hence, you get an area that between this line and this line is shaped like a cupid's bow that is sometimes called or referred to as a cupid's bow type of posterior palatal seal in that this bed of tissue as you can see is somewhat shaped like a the total outline of it is shaped somewhat like a cupid's bow in order to scrape a seal what we're really going to do now is we're going to scrape an indentation into this cast and that as the denture is finished and the denture is processed against this, that denture will place pressure in this area across the posterior palate and help form the valve seal that we need for retention of the denture. The scraping of that seal is you, we usually do with a discoid instrument, a discoid such as you use an operative dentistry for car carving an alloy, and we use the rounded end of the cleoid discoid, which would be the discoid end of it, and we want to scrape onto this cast, into this cast, a groove, and that groove we want to be about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half wide and a millimeter to a millimeter and a half deep. So we're going to scrape that groove starting lateral to the hamular notch about two to three millimeters and we're going to scrape a groove now into the cast with the back edge of that groove that we're scraping right on the posterior limit of where we want that denture to go. And we want that groove to be a millimeter to a millimeter and a half deep. Usually it will be a millimeter deep in most areas and if you have an area of a, of a particularly deep bed of glandular tissue that you would like to take advantage of, you can take it a little deeper than a, than a millimeter. And we're going to scrape that now all the way across from hamular notch to hamular notch. <coughs> Then that lateral to the hamular notch, down two or three millimeters, four millimeters maybe, lateral to the notch. That's in order to, what, the reason why you're doing that is to make this posterior palatal seal, make sure that it is continuous with the peripheral seal so that we have a total seal out of it. Once you have that groove carved into the cast, that's the posterior limit and the depth of the, of the seal area that we're carving into the cast, then take a knife and we're going to bevel from the depth of that groove, bevel it as far forward as the anterior line or the cupid's bow. And just bevel it forward by scraping the cast so that it bevels from the depth of that groove, that original groove, out to the anterior line. The 
posterior edge of the seal is here, and that's the exact length that we want to finish the denture. How far back on the pallet that denture should go would be exactly to that line. Anterior to that line, we have scored the cast and put a depression into the cast that at its narrowest points, which is through the notches, is about a millimeter wide. At its widest points, it is as much as six or eight millimeters wide. And the depth of it is anywhere from a millimeter to a millimeter and a half deep all the way across the pallet. Now this, when your denture is processed, will become a positive pressure in the patient's mouth and that finishes forming the seal. Now that's all we need now as far as posterior palatal seal. We can use a round burr, about a number eight or ten round burr and a slow speed hand piece. And we would like the cut that we make to be exactly on the posterior line that we determined was going to be the posterior limit of the denture. And in areas where the tissue was quite deep, you can go a little deeper with the cut. The usual bit is I try to establish the depth of it, remember the depth when we palpated it in the patient's mouth, and you can go half of the depth that you could palpate with a minimum depth of about one millimeter. Once we have cut the depth of it and it'll have a little rounded cut with the posterior limit of that cut right on the posterior limit of where we want the denture to end. Now we can take a knife or other instruments and bevel from the base of the cut that we made, from the rounded base of it, bevel it as far forward as the anterior line or the cupid's bow line. I like to use a number 7R buffalo plaster knife to bevel from the base of the cut, the rounded cut that we made, to bevel that forward as far as our cupid's bow was. So we can take the 7R knife and just bevel it by scraping a little bit on it to let it bevel as far forward as the cupid's bow.